Good evening, publishers. How are you? Good. I like to hear the enthusiasm. We've been here for quite some time today. I know I have. So um, it's good to see that you guys are still very excited to, to learn more today. Um, so uh, let's get started. I won't hold you all up because we don't have a whole lot of time. And then before you know it, we'll be on a boat checking out all the cool architecture that the city has to offer. All righty. So who am I? I got some really cool, quirky pictures um, to liven it up a little bit. As she mentioned, Libby, um, I'm Jeanette Washington. I started my career as a speech pathologist. So I worked with individuals who had stuttering and fluency issues, speech delays or impediments. And um, I really enjoyed it. I worked in a public school system in Jackson, Mississippi. And so I'm sure you can imagine some of the Southern draws that I had to experience and the, the African-American vernacular that I had to um, assess with a lot of my students. I worked in a K through 12 setting. So um, I worked from anything from kindergarten all the way up to high school students going up to college. Um, I worked with them and helped them to um, get more confident about the way that they would speak. Alrighty, so um, after that, I moved to Detroit. Um, my son and I um, decided to, to move to Detroit so we can be closer to family, and that's him. He was crying this morning because he wanted to be here so bad. <laughs> he, he says he coins himself as wanting to be a robotics teacher when he grows up, so we'll see, <laughs> we'll see how that unfolds. Um, in the meantime, between moving here, I learned how to program at a, a boot camp a 12 week boot camp in Detroit. It was one of the most stressful things that I've ever done in my life. <laughs> I didn't think that uh, it would be as difficult as it was because I've always been one of those students that thought I knew it all. Teacher couldn't tell me anything. So um, after getting my master's degree, I was like a coding boot camp. I mean, how hard could that really be? But I was learning back end. So Java just had me just really stressed for a lack of better words. <laughs> so my talk is on dyslexia and how it relates to, to coding. And to a lot of um, my publishers, you guys are going into the websites and making sure that everything is accessible and that um, everything meets a particular standard for um, your viewers and for your audience. So um, dyslexia is comes from a Greek word, dis meaning difficulty, and lexia means language. So you have difficulties with language. Very simple enough, um, but to get more complex with it, it's a neurological disorder and it's found to be genetic. So if someone in your family has it, it's likely that you will possess or exhibit those um, issues with language. So what do you see and does this help? I am going to pull up a simulation of what, I won't say a typical dyslexic learner would see, but um, because obviously it's a spectrum. So some of it is gonna be low, a lot of it is gonna be moderate, and then you have severe dyslexia. However, I'm gonna give you guys the opportunity to check out this website. I wanna get it larger and tell me if you can read. I'll ask a volunteer to read for me. I'm gonna zoom in so we can get it larger. All right, anybody wanna throw a finger hand up to read this? <laughs> it looks, looks quite, speak up so we can hear you. <laughs> so this is just a template that I found actually on GitHub. Someone wanted to create a simulation of, I think they said their roommate experiences dyslexia and they wanted to create a, a simulation of what they thought dyslexia was with the help of their roommate who actually um, has or possesses it. So um, as you see, it says, a friend who has dyslexia described to me how she experiences reading. She can read, but it takes a lot of concentration and the Letters seem to jump around. I remembered reading about typoglimpsia. Wouldn't it be possible to do it ooh, interactively on a website with JavaScript? Sure it would. <laughs> 
feel like making a book bookmarklet of this or something. All right, so you guys get a gist of it. Again, um, in most cases, it's not this difficult for um, a dyslexic person to read, but this gives you a little bit of a, a, a instance of what some of our uh, counterparts are experiencing because with dyslexia, you have difficulties with blending sounds. You have difficulties with... Um, acknowledging and recognizing letters. And uh, with those two together, it can be difficult to even say words that you just saw or to remember um, the, the words to something that you've read before. So moving on, grab my slide back up again. All right, I located a font called Dyslexi Font that has been statistically proven to be a, a better font for individuals who experience severe dyslexia because um, the letters are very distinct. They're very unique. As you know, um, as we are coming up in grammar school, we oftentimes confuse our Bs and our Ps and our Qs. And a lot of times those letters, um, they're synonymous to us. But after first grade and you've had a full year of writing and reading instruction, if you are still switching those B's, Q's and P's, then at that point, um, an intervention is usually made. A teacher steps in and someone starts to assess you to see whether or not you do uh, possess dyslexia. So with this particular font, as you will see, I'm trying to get it a little bigger so you all will see some of the distinctive uh, features of it like the P has a large bottom, the L has um, a slight little rivet beneath it so that you can distinctively tell that from an I, let's say. So the T, the O is a little larger than um, what we would generally see. And again, this is called Dyslexi Font. If anyone is interested in doing a little bit more research on how this font can be more helpful to your sites or just for you in general with reading, it may come as very helpful. All right, so we're going to move on. And everyone you will ever meet knows something you don't. This is a quote from my favorite scientist. I grew up with him. I'm an 80s baby, so Bill Nye, the science guy, taught me everything I know about uh, volcanoes, earthquakes, dinosaurs, and the whole nine. So we're moving on so that we can start discussing some hacks or some plugins and things that individuals with dyslexia can utilize on their site or um, as they're creating or publishing sites. So we have audio readers, internet filters, and syntax practice. Now the reason we saw the slide previously that said um, everyone that you'll ever meet knows something you don't because this is your time to provide us with input. We all have something that we're bringing to the table, different experiences, different things that we've uh, had um, challenges at work, and maybe some of you do possess some language-based learning disorders. What is helpful for you? I'll take some hands and you can tell us what kind of audio readers you use and um, why you think it's helpful and just share. This is a time for us to connect and share with one another so we can all get to the next level and push the envelope. Any audio readers that you all prefer over the others? Not quite. When I say audio readers, I mean um, a way, and actually, when I think of audio reader, I mean like a book that you can read, uh, like a Kindle that you can access and put a plug in so that it'll read aloud. However, I want to know some things that you can implement on a website that will help read the text from the website. I know I came to your uh, talk earlier, and you had some really great um, thoughts and some ideologies about uh, usage, so if you don't mind sharing something that we could use to help us hear the words on a site. So every match is how much voiceover, uh, which is the main goal in your settings before reading all of the text of the website and all of the text of the document. Okay, so that's one thing. Excellent. Anybody else have some cool ways that uh, they think or that they've used 
to read text from a website or from a book. I use um, Dragon Naturally Speaking, and um, the natural language processor is it's pretty real to life. It doesn't sound really um, like robotic. So that's one that I uh, use. And again, I don't have a Mac, but I have an HP. And I believe there is um, some capabilities on my HP where they have someone that can go ahead and read for you. Go ahead. With the Mac. Mm -hmm. You guys are going to make us all run out and get Macs and iPhones, huh? <laughs> Yes. Okay. All right. Cool. So with internet filters, a lot of times um, individuals with dyslexia will also have ADHD. Actually, 60% of um, individuals who possess dyslexia have ADHD. So it's hard to stay focused on one task. So I've heard people in the past when they're working on a project, um, sometimes they unplug from their router just so they can stay focused and they don't have to jump into another site. Are there some other, and I know another internet filter is called K9, but does anybody know any other filters where it will allow you to stay focused working or publishing on one item and not skipping and dodging and jump into other sites? No? Yes. Uh-huh. Okay. Cool. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And I will go ahead. Good. That's super helpful because I know me, if I'm working on one thing, somehow I'm on Facebook and I'm in somebody's 2015 vacation photos. I don't know how I got there, but I'm there and I'm just like invested. So we'll definitely keep that in mind um, when we are uh, online working um, on a publishing assignment. And finally, syntax practice. And after this, I'm going to hand it on over to our next lightning speaker. Um, syntax practice is something that um, is usually built into the computers, but um, again, with dyslexia, that's something that a lot of people have issues with because they hear the words differently than how the words are spelled. So um, using grammar checkers or things that are built into the computer, I know if you have certain IDAs, um, EAs, they have it built into where if you spell a line of code incorrectly or you put in a wrong um, variable, it will key or clue you in to let you know exactly what's going on or that there was a grammatical error. So that is it. I am, I was going to tell you guys about some other people who <laughs> had dyslexia, but you can see them here and I'm gonna uh, let it go from here. Thank you so much, Jeanette. You're welcome.